Francis Kelly, born January 17th, 1975, to his father Francis Jr. and his mother, her name was also Francis. He grew up on the west side of Cleveland, graduated from high school in 93, went on to attend Ohio State University, where he graduated in 99. In 2007, he received his MBA, and as an adult, he relocated to the Indianapolis Metro and purchased a house in Carmel, Indiana. Very friendly, lighthearted, nice guy to be around, with a very pleasant and enjoyable demeanor, according to his friends. While everyone else will go out on Friday evening, Francis will go to the gym and the grocery store, and that was enough excitement for him. Father of two daughters, including a two-year-old he had joint custody of, co-parenting with his ex-girlfriend, Heidi Littlefield. On his birthday, January 17th, 2021, his friends who referred to him as Fran noticed something very strange. Not only was it his birthday, but it was the weekend of a Cleveland Browns divisional playoff game. Fran, a big fan of the Cleveland Browns. And like many Browns fans, Fran's friend Tom was very excited at the time too. It was the Browns' best performing season since 1994 and the team's first time making it to the playoffs in nearly 20 years. It was a very big deal. So it was weird for Fran to not answer any of Tom's messages. Tom would have never guessed in a million years what was going on with his friend. Take a second to make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Click the notification bell for all updates. If you're watching from Cleveland or Indianapolis, let me know below. I want to hear from you. Fran, a very active father, co-parenting his two-year-old daughter with his ex, Heidi. On Friday, January 15th, he was preparing to celebrate his birthday that weekend and watch the NFL playoffs. He noticed that something was off with his oatmeal. So he picked up his phone and sent a message to Heidi. He told Heidi, you were in my fridge last night and it tastes funny after a couple of bites and now I'm feeling lightheaded, referring to his oatmeal. Heidi responded, who the F puts oatmeal in a fridge? I don't know anything you do or want to. Your life and the stuff you say do is beyond me. Heidi sent him other messages in response, but the final two were never open. Fran tried to make it through the rest of his workday, but he wasn't feeling so well. A little before 2 p.m., he sent a message to his supervisor. He told him that he needed to log off for the rest of the day. Fran was working from home. And to his supervisor, it was very odd because he never logged off early. He was always at work and had perfect attendance. Heidi and Fran took care of their two-year-old daughter together, but they had an upcoming court date later that month on January 27th. According to Fran, Heidi was violating the parenting time order. He claimed that she was not letting him pick up his daughter and Heidi would stay at his house during his parenting time. Heidi believed that Fran had a case against her to persuade a judge to give him full custody of their daughter. She did not want him to take their daughter away, so she plotted on how she could get full custody. She started this in October 2020. Heidi enlisted help from her adult daughter, Logan. At the time, Logan was about 21 years old. The plan was to place drugs in Fran's food so that Heidi can tell the judge that he's on drugs, get him to take a drug test that he would fail, and then use that to prove that he's unfit so that he can lose custody. Heidi's daughter, Logan, was battling meth addiction, so Heidi knew that she could get her to find drugs. She wanted her daughter to get her hands on fentanyl, and Logan told her mother that she could get it from a dealer in Ohio. Just like she said she would, Logan came back with the drugs. Heidi had her daughter sneak into Fran's house, and they ended up making three attempts. In October 2020, Logan placed fentanyl in his takeout soup, and then on another occasion, she placed it in his oatmeal. So at some point, Heidi just wanted to get rid of Fran. She enlisted Logan's boyfriend, Robert, to help her out, she gave Robert $2,500 to hire a hitman. Robert never hired the hitman, though. Instead, he and her daughter, Logan, they used the money for drugs, clothes, and hotels. Heidi ended up arguing with her daughter because Robert got the money, but he never got the job done. In multiple messages, Heidi told her daughter that Robert failed to do the work around the house that she paid him for. Work around the house called for taking out friends. On January 14th, 2021, just days before Fran's birthday, they tried one more time. Logan broke into Fran's house with her mother's help. Heidi pushed her daughter through the back window. Logan went into the kitchen because they knew that he prepared his oatmeal the night before and would leave it in the refrigerator. She pushed his almond toppings to the side, 
and placed fentanyl in the oatmeal and then covered it back up. That same day, Logan walked around Fran's house because she reportedly wanted to know what kind of person he was. She stole a pair of his Apple headphones. A short time later, she called her mother to come pick her up. Heidi picked up Logan after she laced the oatmeal, then treated her to lunch. She took her daughter to a sandwich shop. The next day, Fran went to eat his oatmeal. He noticed that it didn't taste right, and then he started to feel lightheaded. That's when he contacted Heidi. Heidi instantly denied having anything to do with his oatmeal. Fran logged off from his work computer at 1.56 p.m., which was highly unusual. He normally worked until 5 p.m., and then at some point, he fell out on the floor. Heidi and Logan showed back up to Fran's house. Fran was still on the floor, gasping for air, and then Heidi told her daughter to break his neck. Logan told her mother that she couldn't do it. He was too big. That's when Heidi went to his room and got his favorite tie. She choked him. Then to make sure that he was really gone, Heidi started hitting him in his head. She moved him, then placed drugs under the chair to make it seem like he had an overdose. Fran had two daughters, one with Heidi and a nine-year-old with another woman. The mother of his oldest daughter called the police and said that he was supposed to pick up their daughter for visitation on his birthday, but he never showed up. Police went to Fran's home the day after his birthday, and that's when his body was discovered. And we begin at 6 o'clock with a murder-for-hire plot in Carmel. Police say one man is dead, three people, including a mom and daughter, are in jail, and the plot involved drug-laced oatmeal. My teammates Richard Essex has the disturbing details. The man that lived in this Carmel house was in a dispute with his ex-girlfriend over the custody of their two-year-old daughter. And according to court records, the ex-girlfriend had tried to kill this guy more than once. Now she's a suspect along with two others in his murder. 41-year-old Heidi Littlefield, her daughter, 22-year-old Logan Runyon, and her boyfriend, 29-year-old Robert Walker, faced charges in the murder of 46-year-old Francis Kelly. A friend found Kelly dead in his Carmel home on January 18th, and she told police that she hadn't heard from him for a couple days. The autopsy found Kelly had been strangled, but toxicology reports later showed that he had fentanyl in his system. Kelly had been in a custody battle with Littlefield. She had been inside of his house just three days before he was found dead. According to a text message exchange between Kelly and Littlefield, he tasted something odd in his oatmeal. Text from Kelly said, you were in my fridge last night and it tastes funny after a couple bites and now I'm lightheaded. The lightheadedness was from fentanyl. Investigators say Littlefield had tried before by lacing Kelly's soup with fentanyl. According to court records released to IT8, police were notified of recorded conversations of Littlefield saying she wanted Kelly dead and she was making plans on overdosing him and planting drugs on him. Police also tell us that Littlefield and her daughter had paid Walker last year to have Kelly killed. Investigators say they gave Walker $2,500 to find someone to do it. Walker told police investigators that he had used the money to buy drugs and had no intention of doing what Littlefield wanted. Walker and Runyon were picked up by police in Ohio earlier this week. Walker had an outstanding local warrant, and during questioning, he told investigators everything. He told police that Littlefield drug Kelly, then went back to his house, found him on the floor barely breathing. She used one of his favorite ties to strangle Kelly and then bludgeoned his head against the floor. Heidi Littlefield was supposed to make her first court appearance today, and the first court appearance for the other two has not been set. In Carmel, Richard Essex, Wish TV, WishTV.com, and follow us on Facebook. Heidi was identified as a suspect after relatives told investigators that she made past statements saying that she wanted Fran dead. Heidi told them that he was abusive and she would be failing her daughter if the quote, do didn't end up dead. She went on to tell her relative that he's better off going. And then after his body was discovered, she said, I didn't mean to kill him last time. I might as well say I did it and just say I'm crazy and pregnant. Now, get this. Someone called the police to warn them about what was going on. Heidi apparently told her ex that she was planning to get rid of Fran. He called the police and the sheriff's office, gave them Heidi's information as well as Fran's information. But nothing happened at all. The officers, they didn't follow up to investigate. Heidi was arrested along with her daughter, Logan, as well as Logan's boyfriend, Robert. Robert admitted to taking the money from Heidi, but said he had no intention on doing anything to Fran. He just used the money. Robert took a plea deal 
and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Initially, Logan was going to take the rap for the whole case for her mother. That's what she told a close source to the family that she would do. She told the source that she didn't mind staying in prison for the rest of her life for her mother. Apparently though, Logan changed her mind because she also took a plea deal for 26 years and testified against her mother in trial. Heidi was found guilty in August 2022 and sentenced in October 22 to 115 years. 60 years for murder, 35 years for conspiracy to commit murder resulting in death, and 20 years for conspiracy to commit murder not resulting in death for the other failed attempts to poison Fran. The sentences will run concurrently, so the max that she will stay in prison is 60 years. Heidi is now 42 years old, so hopefully she's never released under any circumstances. This is a very dangerous woman. You know, I think Heidi the hyena, she's definitely in the top 10 most toxic mothers that I've covered here in 2022 for sure. Fran was a good father. He was active in both of his daughter's lives. And instead of working with him and cooperating, she was trying to get her daughter and her daughter's boyfriend to get work done around his house. You know, get rid of him. She tried to do everything that she could to make it harder for him, not following the court order, which is why he was taking her back to court in the first place. Literally trying to sabotage Fran, but also ruin their toddler's relationship with him by ripping him out of her life, ultimately permanently removing him. And as a result, she's removed herself as well. The two-year-old left without a mother and a father, and she's in the system now, so there's no telling what's going to happen there. Heidi is a horrible mother. Not only did she take her two-year-old's father away, but she got her older daughter to help her do it. She destroyed her life too. Logan testified that she did what she did for her mother's attention, approval, and love. And then Heidi the hyena, she's such a coward. She made her daughter do most of the dirty work. And only when her daughter couldn't finish it off, she did it herself. Then there's another piece of this. Fran had a million dollar life insurance policy. His daughters believed to be the beneficiaries. If Fran was taken out and the money went to his daughters, Heidi could have accessed that money if she didn't get caught. And then the authorities here, they really dropped the ball. Heidi's ex told them exactly what she was up to. You know what, let's go ahead and get the conversation started. Why didn't the authorities take the reports about Heidi seriously? Let me know what you think about that below. Shout out to Derek and David. I appreciate you all for your support. Don't forget that you can support this channel as well. Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.